we're going to take the next hour. At, we're going to show you Brevity Marketer, which is our, our marketing tool, which has a, a lot of power and prowess. Before I do that, with maybe the first like 20 minutes today, I want to show you guys or talk about a, a, a marketing program that we have. So we're first going to talk about kind of us doing some marketing on your behalf. And then we'll talk about Brevity Marketer, which is kind of our self-serve marketing tool. So before we jump in here and, and get started, what, do me a favor. Why don't you guys find the chat right now? Let's just, why don't you check in with me? Let, let me know where you're joining me from and kind of what your role in the operation is, right? So maybe you're the marketing manager on your team and they're like, hey, go watch this webinar. Maybe you're the team owner. Maybe you're an individual agent and, and you do everything, right? From end to end, it's, it's entirely your job. Um, Nadia, I'll share my screen with you in just a second here. I mean, I guess I could share it with you now. Let's see here. So Nadia, tell me if you, John, awesome. He's the managing broker. Nadia, tell me if you see my screen now. You should see the the kind of back end of our Brevity Marketer um, dashboard there. So John, thank you for playing along. I appreciate that. The rest of you guys, cool, not it. Where are you guys, like what's your role kind of inside of your organization or maybe you are the organization? I'm just curious to get a sense for kind of who's who in the audience here today. All right, so we've got a um, couple of marketing managers, looks like a, a couple of team owners. Angela does, she's the admin director of ops that we call her the do it all, right? So, all right, so we've got kind of a variety of, of, of folks here. That's fantastic. Here's what we're gonna do. The, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I wanna talk to you guys about Brevity Connect. So this is, I'm, and I'm gonna blaze through this, you guys, but feel free to ask any questions or we can slow down um, at some different spots for, for Tanya or Nadia who are you know individual agents, like their sole business proprietors the people that wear 50 hats in your, in your guy's world. Right. Um, I'm going to blaze through this kind of, this is marketing we do for you guys. So we call this Brevity Connect. And about two years ago, Ben came to our team and he said, guys, um, you know, we've been doing internet marketing, lead generation conversion, really in a very similar manner for like 20 years in real estate. Um, let's take it to that next level. And that next level has been, increasingly being deployed on all of us as we travel uh, the internet, the apps, the social media sites of our world. You guys, as we kind of unravel what Brevity Connect is, you will realize, yeah, this is happening to me everywhere. And we should be able to leverage this for our businesses as well. So we set out, I'm just going to, look, there's some problems in real estate, right? On the consumer side, like they don't necessarily remember where they were or, or how we got their info when they, when they kind of become a lead in our world. They don't know why we're contacting them. They don't know who we are. They don't care who we are. And, and this all really boils down to we are getting people into our database. They're coming across our marketing. They're, they're answering a, you know, a, a circle prospecting call we make to them or, or they're getting a piece of mail from us and they're not ready that day to buy, sell, or invest right? It's just our, our marketing is, is constantly out there. It's constantly attracting people. But a lot of times the people it's attracting, they're just not ready today. The, the life cycle of a real estate buyer and seller, people don't say, oh, I'm going to buy a house and then go buy it tomorrow. Like they say, oh, I think, honey, maybe we should think about, you know, downgrading, upgrading, whatever it is. And that process starts today and it lasts for a while. It lasts for nine months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. So they're not ready today when our marketing first engages them. You know, and there's some problems that that creates for us on the other side of that, that marketing, right? Like we don't know what the, that person's intent is when our marketing reaches them. We don't know if they're a buyer, a seller, and that, we don't know. They, they could be ready to buy, you know, 10 rental prop. We have no idea right? We don't know where they want to live, how much they can afford. Like, are they pre-approved for a mortgage? Like we, we generally don't know anything about the people that our marketing's landing in front of, right? We end up making a bunch of cold calls because most of the people that, that see our marketing once or twice, right? It, it doesn't stick in their head. And so most of the calls and the outreach that we're making to people that have potentially seen our marketing still is cold. Right. Because they're not just seeing our, our marketing. Like as we leave our homes or pick up our phones in the morning, we're being assaulted by marketing left and right. 
They don't come back to us. They don't come back to our website. We, we don't, we don't have a, a way to continually draw them back over and over and over. And then we, a lot of you guys, even, even Nadia, Shannon, some of you guys that are like, or uh, Tanya, some of you guys that are single agents, you still have like big databases, right? We've got a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand people in our database. We've got our sphere, our past clients, all these old leads. And a lot of times that stuff just sits in the database. So what if we could just target these people when they were ready to buy, sell, or invest? We could follow them around the internet. And like, instead of them just looking at, at real estate on your website, we could show it to them after they left your website. What if like just everywhere they went and your brand was always present, this omnipresent brand that if they were on you know, Fox News or CNN or MSNBC, you'd be there. Wall Street Journal, yep. A Candy Crush app at night when they're, when they're, they're trying to get a little, little downtime before bed. Yeah, you could be there too, right? What if just everywhere they went, we were, we were always there, right? What if well, all those people in our database, our old leads, our past clients, our sphere, right? What if they were constantly being re-engaged by us, constantly had us top of mind, in some cases, not even realizing they're seeing these ads over and over as they're being kind of in printed on the back of their brain, right? What if, what if sellers, right? Some seller prospect that came to your website, who's not going to sell their house for nine months or a year until the kids get out of school next year, right? What if they just saw your marketing everywhere they went? And after six months, they were like, man, Tanya, Tanya McLeod, like this lady, she freaking advertises everywhere. She's on the wall street journal. This is insane. Like she's definitely the one I want to sell my house. So we built that. It's called Rivety Connect. People have had lots of really good things to say about it. This has been a two-year project for us to, you know, we launched it about, oh, no, about six months ago, but we've continued to refine this thing. Phil's had some really great, great success with his, especially early, right? Especially early. Jacqueline's got a 10X ROI. And the funny thing about ROIs when you're talking about marketing, if you're doing it right, the ROI will actually grow over time, right? Because marketing efforts that we put in today might, might turn into to business a month, six months, or a year from now. So that ROI just increases over time. Ken, the, the thing I liked about this is his agents started to feel like this thing was working for them. And look, um, the confidence that comes from feeling like it's working might make his agents get in there and, and make a few more phone calls to a few more people in the database because they feel like, man, these people are actually like, they're receptive to our calls, right? That's a really big deal. And Jeff's closing all kinds of extra business. Here's what happens when, when mo to most people that come into your database, right? That, down at the bottom, th these could be a lead. This could be a past client. This could be a sphere. This, this is anybody in your database your ability to reach out and kind of stay connected to them, touch them through phone calls, emails, text messages, right? That bottom line there represents most of the contacts in your database and your engagement with them, right? When they first came into your world, you probably called and texted them a, a few times, but they weren't ready. They were two years out and you just, you stopped after that. Maybe you've got some drip emails going to them. Maybe you've got some listing alerts that, that, you know, every couple of days, send them some new listings. We want your outreach. We want your, your touches with these, these contacts in your database, whoever they be, your past clients, your sphere, your leads. We want them to be really consistent and we want it to be over a long period of time. And if it's just you, right? Like how many people could you do that top approach with not that many, right? You max out eventually if you were trying to get multiple calls into every lead, multiple texts and emails into every lead, listing alerts and market reports. We lay with Brevity Connect this other layer, that second layer where you see dynamic property retargeting and display ad retargeting. We're able to lay over the top of the things that the Brevity platform already does for you. Things like listing alerts and automatic emails and automatic texts, market reports. We're able to lay over the top of that or I guess in this case, underneath it, another layer of marketing that's constantly humming in the background, drawing people back to your business. And, and we'll show you what that is. And by the way, like as we get 
leads. So we're, we're, we're generating new leads for you. Then we're engaging those leads, but we're also engaging anybody that's already in your database. So for the new leads, we're looking to get really high quality, right? Not just name, email, and phone number. You know, not one property they've looked at. Like if we got a lead from Zillow, it's got one property, right? We're looking to get multiple properties, return visits. We're looking to get them to answer a certain set of questions that are really important to you guys. Questions like, do you have another home to sell? Are you pre-qualified for a mortgage? Right. In addition to the obvious things like name, email, and phone number that we want, right? Time frame. Well, when, when are you going to move? Right. We want to get you a lead that at the end of the day, like you feel confident reaching out to because a lot of those issues that we had in the beginning that we talked about that have traditionally been issues with, with real estate leads. We don't know where they're looking. We don't know exactly what price range. We maybe have one property to go on, but that's it. We can actually create a, a higher quality lead blah, 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 right? What to expect from these leads? They're, they're, they're qualified and engaged. There's a lot of them. The conversion times are, are pretty stinking good, right? Our agents, like Ken Adams' agents, are, are more motivated to, to get in there and, and go after these things. And, and Nadia, if you're a single agent, you're more motivated to go in there and get after these things, right? That last one, managed on your behalf by experts. Look, I'm a firm believer that you guys should go out and in certain scenarios, kind of push your brand and push your marketing. And that's why we built an entire tool, Brevity Marketer, that we're going to roll into here in just a second. This particular program is managed by people that literally all they do all day long is, is manage ad campaigns, right? Manage retargeting, manage remarketing campaigns. It's their job. They do it eight hours a day. Some of these, these guys and gals are doing it 10 hours a day. I can hear them. They're actually on the other side of the office for me right now. I can hear them over there. I can hear Grant right now having a consultation with, with a Remedy Connect client trying to figure out exactly what their ad sets are going to look like. I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a sense for kind of how Remedy Connect gets new leads. And then we'll talk about the remarketing, the retargeting, the kind of the engagement, that long-term engagement. What we do is we work with you and I can literally hear Grant on the other side of my wall right here. He's having this conversation right now with somebody. But when we had this conversation with Jeff Eller, we, we asked Jeff the question, what kind of buyer do you want to attract? And Jeff's answer basically boiled down to, I want to attract a buyer that has a house to sell before they go buy the next one. So in his area, Las Vegas, and this is an ad set from last summer, you guys, this, this example that we see on the screen, but it's such a great example. Um, and so this was COVID was happening. And so in his market there in Las Vegas, there's a lot of condos or high rises that have these community pools, or there's even like little townhome complexes that have community pools. And the pools were all shut down last summer. And when it's 112 degrees in Vegas and your pools shut down, you start to think things like, honey, Maybe we should move out a little bit further out to Henderson, right out to the suburb. And maybe we should get a house with a pool so that we could swim in our pool right now. It's not shut down, right? So we started running these ad sets focused at buyers who were looking in Henderson for homes between 500,000 and a million with a private pool. That ad set, we, we run it out there on Facebook and they get really, really good, you guys, at putting that ad in front of the right person because Facebook doesn't get paid until somebody clicks on Jeff's ad. So it behooves Facebook to put it in front of somebody that this ad is actually gonna strike a chord with. And Facebook knows a lot about what all of us are doing, right? Not even just on Facebook. Like I swear they listen to my phone. They, they swear they don't. But we basically tell Facebook, hey, go out and find people that you think would be interested in Henderson Homes between 500 and a million. And they're not gonna show this ad, by the way, to many like 18 to 25 year old kids, right? Because they are, they know how much those kids make. They know if they have jobs or if they're in school. Like Facebook knows all this stuff about us. So they're going to put this ad in front of somebody that makes 200,000 a year, right? They're a doctor down in Vegas. They, they live in a, you know, an area in Vegas that's kind of a concentrated with these, these high rises or these, these townhome complexes. They're going to put it in front of the people that, that are going to click on it. And then the, the process here, we, we eliminate all the friction. We use Facebook forms, so it's really easy when they click, like learn more, or their information's already filled out. And then that next click, they say, yep, that's me. 
We, we drop them over on your website, logged in. And this is a really, 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 really big deal. I can't even stress how big of a deal this is because if you were running your own ads, right, and you were driving people to your website, if you use the Facebook form when they landed on your website, you'd have no idea what they were doing. You'd simply just pass this lead not logged in over to your website and they could go look around. Maybe your website would have like some forced registration that would pop up and go, hey, can you register? But they already gave you their information on Facebook. So we've eliminated all that friction for the consumer. They can log in using that quick and easy Facebook button. And we just take that information that they give us in that Facebook button and we drop them over to your website, logged in automatically. They don't have to give us your email and phone number on the website or anything like that. They're just logged in. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. Took us a lot of development hours, a lot of people smarter than me in that room trying to figure out like, how do we force this information back to Facebook? You got to figure it out. So it gets you these lower cost, higher quality leads, right? Target, we, we target these specific audiences. You meet with our team and we, we, we walk through and figure out what's those audiences going to be in your particular market. Over time, as, these, as we get leads, right? We might, Facebook might send 100 people, might click on that, on that button, right? And, and come to our website. But there are certain activities that people take that are higher value. Like for example, somebody landed on your website, just looked at the one property and was like, oh, okay, and left. That'd be fine. They're, they're a contact in your database. They're a lead for you now. But I'd rather have a lead that landed on my website, looked at that first property, favorited it, set up a saved search to get other properties sent to them like that, went and looked at five more properties. Like if somebody did that, what we do is we take those people that do the high value activities and we put them all in a bucket and then we send them back to Facebook and we go, Hey, Facebook, I know you sent us a hundred leads, like high five. Thanks. We appreciate it. But you sent us 18 that took these really specific steps. And so we'd like to give you back those people, let you know who they were. And then could you find us more like them and Facebook in their, you know, their massive algorithm that at the end of the day knows just about everything there is to know about any of us. Right? They're going to take that, crunch that stuff and go, all right, they want more people like these. Let's go find them. And then they're going to, they're going to target our ads to more, more people like the lookalike audience that we give back to them. This is some, this is some, it's like cutting edge stuff in the real estate industry. This is stuff that Nordstrom, you know, some of the big retailers have been doing to us for years, right? They're just getting better and better at it. We want you guys to be better at this. So. After, after we generate a lead or to anybody that's been on your website. So if we've got people coming to your website because we're sending them listing alerts or, or you're out there marketing your property with Brevity Marketer, however we can get them on the site. We start to follow them around and show them similar properties to what they were looking at. Now, if they were on your site, just kind of browsing around, not looking at anything, we'll, we'll follow them around with properties kind of in your average price point in your market. But if they look at one thing, they look at a house in Bellingham for 500,000, the next time they go into any site that's served by Facebook's algorithms and, and ad sets, they're gonna get retargeted with properties in Bellingham for $500,000. And later, if they start looking over in Ferndale, the neighboring town at $600,000 properties, we're gonna retarget them and put $600,000 properties in Ferndale in front of them. Every time they're on Facebook or Instagram or any of the apps or the websites that Facebook's ad network serves, which is more and more every day, by the way. So we're going to make sure that these folks are constantly seeing active listings, right? Some of your markets listings don't stay active for very long. So we've got these ads that are constantly rotating out the pendings, bringing up the new listings. There's always new stuff for that person to see as they head back to Facebook or Instagram or any of these websites or apps, right? We're constantly retargeting these people with properties they like, right? We know that because we're doing it based on the properties they've been looking at on your website. Then we follow them around the internet, not just in Facebook's environment, but also in any of the ad environments that Google services. So Facebook and Google serve ads to about 98% of the internet the apps, the websites, like everywhere you go as you're being targeted with ads, it's coming from one of those two, you know, thousand pound gorillas, right? So we go out on all the sites. Like I'm talking Wall Street Journal, Fox, 
I, we don't care if they lean left or right, you guys. If they like to go to MSNBC, cool, you'll be there. If they like to go to Fox, sweet, you'll be there too. Your local newspaper, like here in Bellingham, the Bellingham Herald, yep, you'll be there. Wall Street Journal, New York Times, yep, yep. They, they get bored. They're like, oh, my God, I like friggin' Tanya's everywhere. Like, I can't get away from this lady. I'm just going to go, you know, play my Candy Crush or my Clash of Clans or what, you know, those little ads they serve you in between your games. Maybe you guys don't play games on your phone, but guess what? You'll be on those ads. Like, they'll get so sick of seeing Tanya that when she finally calls, they'll be like, look, fine, we'll work with you, Tanya. Like, can you just stop? Like, you're freaking everywhere, lady. And look, the reality is you're not everywhere. You're just everywhere to them right? Because we're tracking back and we can do this with any new leads we help you generate, any existing leads that you have in that database, any past clients, any sphere. Like we'll take that database and we'll set it up so that these display ads are just assaulting them. Our team will even work with you to figure out what is that, that marketing message? What is that branding message that you want to drive home to people? That message we want to implant in the back of their brain because they're 12 months away from actually doing something. But we want them to see that message every single day for the next 12 months. So when they pick the phone up, Mick, there's no way they're not calling you, right? Or when you call them and they answer, they'll say stuff like, yeah, Mick, I don't even know why I know you, man, but I feel like I know you. Like, who are you again? And you're like, I'm the guy that's been following you around the internet. You see my, my stuff a million times. Here's some examples of some of these targeted campaigns. This one's on CNN. This one's at the top of the Wall Street Journal. We've got listing alerts and market reports, which are kind of our number one like marketing tool to people inside the database. Buyers are going to get listing alerts and a market report. Sellers are always going to get a market report. Our past clients are sphere. It's just a probably one of the like this is this might be the number one like marketing effort that our teams are making into the database. Just Sending people in the database, real estate information is it's probably the most valuable commodity that we're sitting on is the information about the listings and what's selling around their house, right? So we're always, we're always after that. So we've got auto plans and, and Brivity Connect on your dashboard and you get better data kind of right out of the gates. There's an example of a lead that came in. And by the time the agent got to this lead, that consumer had looked at four houses, not just the one they first signed up on, which was in Cedro Woolley. They'd looked at a house in Blaine. They'd look twice at a house in Acme and twice at a house in Ferndale, right? Like I can have a better conversation with this lead when I first jump in. I'm going to guess they probably need three bedrooms. They're looking at this wide range in the county that, that we service here, Whatcom County. So they might not care where in Whatcom County they're going to end up as long as it's under $400,000 and it's got three bedrooms, right? Like we've got a much better sense of what's going on with this, this contact that we're about to reach out to. So it's warmer calls, easier conversions. If you're curious, if you're a Brivity client, or even if you're not, and you're curious about Brivity Connect, what you can do is pull your phone out right now, and we're going to transfer over to Brivity Marketer next. I'm going to show you guys the self-serve stuff that you can do as a Brivity uh, client. But text Brivity Connect to 59559. So pull out your phone, send a, a message to 59559. You can just text the word Brivity Connect. It's a phrase, all one word, no space. And that'll send you back a link on a calendar. And you can go book on Grant's calendar, can have a conversation with him about Brivity Connect, figure out you know, what, what your ads might look like, what kind of marketing message would you guys want to drive home and, and what the cost would be. So check that out. Now let's, let's move over to Brivity Marketer, which is kind of our do-it-yourself uh, marketing dashboard. If you're a Brivity client, you can access your Brivity Marketer by coming right in here to marketing and clicking marketer. That will launch off this Brivity Marketer account for you. If you've never done this before, you're a Brivity client, you're, you go into the CRM, you, you come here, you find marketing, and you, you, you click on Marketer. If you've never done it before, the very first time, it's going to take you through a little setup process, okay? It's a, it's a four-step setup process. And really what it does is it helps you build the templates that we're going to use for just listed and just sold postcards. So... Brivity Marketer is a tool we've built that right now does three things. But every two weeks, we are pumping out kind of new, new uh, content, new templates, new stuff. Um, so it's, it's kind of rapidly evolving. Like we didn't have the, the, the print media flyer creation in here until like a month ago. But now we've got all these different variations of it and all, all sorts of different templates around it. So here's what Brivity Marketer does. Uh, we can do postcard 
direct mail marketing campaigns out of here. We can do easy print media. So our flyers, uh, open house sign-in sheets, door hangers, this kind of thing, right? Then we can create our own Facebook ads. And there's some real power in here. And again, it uses the Brivity website. It, it creates that frictionless experience for the consumer. We use Brivity forms or um, Facebook forms. So when they sign up, we easily capture their information from Facebook. We, we send them over to your website logged in, right? Very similar to the way the Brivity Connect product works where we're managing those ads for you, but you can go out and run your own ads. And then we give you an ability in here to come in and, and get off to a Brivity or a Brivity's a partner in, in Brandco, uh, which runs something called Agent Store. And you guys can jump over there and get marketing materials created for yourself easily if you needed to. So let's talk about the postcards and we'll just kind of move down the line here. Um, these postcards are pretty cool. What we do is, is we hook into the MLS and, and we're part, we got that feed coming from the MLS called an IDX feed. And so every time you, let's say Tanya, you go out tomorrow and you take a new listing and you go put it in. Yeah, Shannon, you can do, you can do Facebook ads without Rivety Connect. Um, yeah, you can do it through Marketer. It'll pull the leads directly into Brivity as opposed to running it through command. Yep, yep, yep. You got it. You can do all that stuff in here, Shannon, in Brivity Marketer. We'll get to that in just a second. Yes, yes, I agree. Yes, you're welcome. Um, all right, so the postcard. So let's say I'll use Shannon. Shannon, you take a listing tomorrow, right? Or maybe you've got one today since you want to run an ad. We can go out and very easily create a just listed postcard campaign for you. So we could come in here and be like, I want to do a six by nine campaign. I want to do you know, this style right here. And I want to do it on, you know, my listing here at 311 115th in Snohomish, right? So I'm like, boom, do it, create my postcard. And what we do, because we've got that feed with the MLS, we just run out really fast. We grab all the information about that uh, property. We drop it into your pre-designed template and you've got a postcard like ready to go. We can come in here and edit this thing Super easy to edit it. If I wanted to say, you know, just list it in, I literally just click in here and I can, you know, just list it in, um, you know, Carriagewood, right? Maybe that's the name of the neighborhood. Uh, I could make this, I, I could change, oops, I don't want to drag that photo around like that, but I can take these photos, I can swap the photos out, right? I'm like, you know what? Let me get some different photos. I got all the MLS photos are in here. So if I wanted to come in here and say, Hey, let's get a good picture of this bathroom down here. I could swap the bathroom photo out. Let's get a good picture of the, the Seahawks bedroom here. Love that. Um, you know, whatever I want to do in there, I get in here and say, well, let's take the square footage off and I'm going to put price in here instead. I want to say this thing's listed at, you know, two ninety nine or whatever, whatever it was listed at. Right. I can get in here and just easily change. I, I I have full control. It's like a full editor here. I could delete these photos out, put something else in there. Once I've edited, and a lot of times you just set the template up where not, people are not even editing this. They're just like straight to print. But once I've edited it and I save it, I'd come back here and just send this postcard out. Now, the way we send postcards, there's, there's four kind of ways that you could decide who gets this postcard. You could use automatically, which is we have an algorithm where we go out we look at this address and we say, if you wanted to send 150 postcards around this address, what would be the best 150 homes to send it to? Not just the nearest 150, like if you did every door direct mail or something like that. Because when we, when we take the algorithm, like let's say that you've got your house listed and, and four doors down, there's a house that they just bought the house two months ago. Well, guess what? We're not going to send them a postcard, you guys. Like they're thinking about curtains and couches right now. Right? They just moved in two months ago. They're not buying another house anytime soon, most likely. So we're going to send your postcard to the guy five doors down that he's lived in his house for seven years. Right? He's a much better candidate to get your, your marketing than the person two doors down that, that's only lived there for two months, just bought. So we'll go out and based on how many homes you want to send it to, we'll figure out the best homes to send it to. That's one way. The other way is you can come in here and say, you know what? Here's my listing. And I know that out here, the people that buy houses out here, they live in Everett. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, look, I want to send my postcard to this area of Everett, right? But I only want to do it to uh, condos, right? Because I got a single family out here. So I'm going to target all these people that live in 
downtown Everett in condos. And I want to target all the people that bought their condo um, longer than seven years ago. So they've been living in a condo for seven years. They live in downtown Everett, which means they probably got a bunch of equity. That area has been blowing up. And they want to get out of the city and move out here to the, the suburb of Everett. Right. And I could run a search here and figure out, well, how many people is that? Right. Maybe I go in here and say, well, you know, I just want to look for people that have, you know, three bedroom condos or smaller, two bedroom condos or smaller, because this is a three bedroom house. Right. I'm looking for the move up condo buyers that have lived in their condo for seven years and they want to get out here to the suburbs. I could target that area of town. Right. Or I could just upload my own CSV file. Maybe I want to come in here and every time I take a listing, I like to send it out to my sphere and my past clients. To let them know, like, I'm doing a lot of business. All right, come in here and, and do that. Or I could just copy it from some campaign I've run in the past. Now, depending on what postcard size you're using, so like the six by nines are 99 cents, the smaller ones are like 69, the larger ones like $1.29 a postcard, right? We use USPS first class mail. So we send these postcards out, we track them. And in fact, if they get returned, let's say that this, this lady, Gail here, was sending 150 postcards and 15 of them came back to her. We give her a credit back, right? We can see down here in her billing. She gets a credit back. In fact, Gail's got a, a balance, right? A, a positive balance. We owe her $22.67. This is probably from the last postcard campaign she sent out, right? She got a credit back on this last campaign because, you know, 18 of the postcards didn't end up making it to their house. They got returned. Fine. We, we give Gail a credit back for that. So we can do these postcard campaigns on either just listers or just solds. In fact, if you get your MLS number in here during the setup process, your agent ID, we are automatically pulling anytime you list a new property or anytime one of your properties moves to sold in the MLS, we will set up a campaign that's just waiting back here like Gail just, she's probably not going to send a campaign on this, this piece of land that she just listed, right? But we still, we created the campaign. It's waiting back here for her to send, right? When she listed this one back on 723, it was waiting back here for her to send. Okay, really powerful. There's all this tracking that we do on here. We do a call every other Thursday. And if you were going to Brevity here, and, and go in here and look inside of uh, the Brevity University, you can find um, the, the classes right in here, Brevity University. You can find these, these live, or you can come up here, get training, go to these live training. We do a training every other week um, for Brevity Marketer. It's right here, right? You can sign up for that. In fact, I will put in the, in the chat the sign up for this. So Shannon... I'm, I'm going to try to show you enough today that you'd probably be dangerous with these Facebook ads. But if you want to get a really deep understanding of the editor and all this functionality inside a marketer, you, you can sign up for that class where we just, we literally go through like building these campaigns and, and how they work and, and that those, those different elements. So we've got, you can do them for open houses. We can do handwritten postcards, right? We'll use these. Sometimes we have a buyer in a particular neighborhood and we can't find any you know, there's nothing listed in that neighborhood, man, our buyer would love to live in that neighborhood. We'll do one of these handwritten postcards to that neighborhood, right? Ask them if anybody's thinking about selling. We've got all these different holiday postcards where we've kind of pre-built designs for you for all the different holidays. If, if you looked at our suite of stuff, you're like, none of this stuff looks like, I got my own design. I always send a postcard that looks like this and we designed it over here on Canva. Awesome. You can just upload that design right here into uh, Brevity Designer, and, and we can send it out on your behalf and track it, right? All that good stuff. So there's a whole suite of, of direct mail marketing style postcards in here that you guys can, can leverage, edit, use. Really, really powerful, okay? The, the next piece in here is the, is the print media stuff. So let's say I just listed that property, right? I'm gonna come in here. I've got all these different designs of, of flyers that I could use. And so I'm like, you know what? I want to do this single, single side, uh, multi-photo, right? Four photos. I'm going to do this one. So I want to create it. Well, where's my property? I'll just pull my property in here again, right? It was this one. You know, I hit create flyer and it's just going to go out there. It's going to pull those images in, right? Boom. I've got a flyer. I'd come in here and I could 
you know, edit this thing if I wanted to. Maybe I want to add a little bit more to the description or I want to add the price in here, right? I've got all these editing functionality over here. I could change the photos again if I wanted to get in there and, you know, get the, the, the bedroom photo or whichever photos I wanted to get in here, right? Come over here and add text if I needed to, right? I could say, oh, I need another headline in here. Let me pull that down here and, um, you know, place it down here. There we go. All right. Right, get it placed down here. Maybe I'm gonna put the price on it down here, right? Whatever, whatever I want to do in here. Full editing control. I can add in different elements. Maybe I want to put a special financing banner up here or something, right? I'm like special financing. We need that. Um, come in here and change the color of that banner because that's not my color. My color's red, right? Like I can, I can do anything I want with this. And it's, it's really easy. We preload it with all the information from the MLS, all the photos, the description, the price, the bedrooms, the bathroom, the square footage, all that fun stuff. And, and off I go at the end, I can save this thing. I can download it for either print because I'm going to print it out. And I want to take it out to the, the open house I'm having this weekend. Or I could do the digital version because I'm going to send it out as an email to you know all my, my investor clients. So this is a great investment property opportunity. Whatever I want to do in here, super easy to create flyers. And um, you can do them for just listed, just sold. If I have an open house coming up, there's this open house sign-in sheet where you can easily like create this QR code that when somebody walked into your open house, if they shot that QR code, you can give them kind of the, the sign-in to the open house form. And that's a form that we can easily build on Rivity by coming up here and, and pulling up my listing and doing forward slash open house, right? So I'd come in here and be like, all right, I'm going to do a an open house registration form here. It's going to be from there. I get my registration form like this. I take it and I'm like, all right, if I was going to go do an open house at this house, if somebody shoots that QR code, I want them to land on this page. So they get registered for my open house, which will drop them into my, and I just hit create and boom, we create a really quick open house sign in flyer, that QR code right there. If you shot it, you would be taken over to this page. So you can log into my open house or register at my open house as you walked in the door. And I wouldn't have to have everybody touching my, you know, my COVID infested uh, iPad, as it were. Lots of cool little tools and toys back here inside of um, Riverty Marketer, all sorts of different kind of print media designs. All right, um, Shannon, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to bang through these Facebook ads. Shannon, if you wanted to tell me what style of ad you're wanting to do, um, I'll actually do an example of that style of ad. Um, yeah, the, the open house QR code thing is, is awesome. Okay, so Shan said, I want to do an open house ad. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to, you're going to click like, like I just did on that open house ad, right? And then I have to get the, the address. So I'll just do it on three, the same property that I've been using here. So 3111 115th Avenue in Snohomish, right? And I said, all right, I want to create an ad. So the, the process back here now, Shannon, is, is pretty simple simple. Okay. Um, we edit the ad. So we can come in here. The first thing I got to do is I got to connect my Facebook business page. If you've never done this before, Shannon, that first time, you know, it'll make you go through that kind of authorization process where you, you have to log into your Facebook and, and give Brevity permission to, to post stuff on your behalf, but you'll connect your, your business page in here. And so, um, you know, you just say, all right, good. So I've got the business page that this ad is going to run from. Um, we've got some kind of pre-filled headlines here. So you've got some open house. You're invited to this open house, open house alert. Don't miss the opportunity to see inside, but you can, so you can pick one of ours or you can just say, you know what? I just want to edit this like myself and use my own awesome headline, All right? You come in here. Um, you can use emojis up in these headlines. So if I wanted to use an emoji, maybe I'd do the dollar sign or the fire sign or whatever. I'd come in here and and search these emojis, right? I'm like, I want to do the, um, what's, what's the fire sign hot or something? No, where's my fire sign? Somewhere in here. Anyway, I can grab all the fun emojis that we all are used to from our phones, right? Something I would tell you, Shannon, about emojis. Um, there's evidence to suggest that uh, the emojis don't make people click through on your ads anymore, but they will force people to slow down for whatever reason when there's emojis in an ad. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put the, the kind of valuable information about the ad up at the top, isolated by emojis, right? So I'd say like that, I'd be like, all right, let me get some space up here at the top for myself. 
Um, and I do like dollar sign, dollar sign or something, right? Dollar sign, dollar sign, or maybe house symbol, house symbol, right? I come in here and I'm like, all right, um, you know, open house this Saturday. Boom. And then I'd, I'd bracket that with another uh, emoji on the backside, right? Boom. And I'd come down here and I'd say front, you know, um, open from one to three or something, right? One to 3 PM, um, you know, wh whatever you want to, to write in here, right? And then you can come down here and you can decide to make this a single photo or a carousel ad. So if I do a carousel ad, right? And by the way, I would always suggest you do carousel um, ads. And so I come in here, I say select photo and I'm like, all right, on this carousel ad, I definitely wanna show this photo, this photo, this photo, this photo. Um, this photo, or I just pick the, the 10, up to 10 photos that I want to show in this carousel ad. And then I can come down here and put them in order. So I'm like, yep, that's the one that I want to see first. And then I, if they were going to scroll, I'd actually want them to see the kitchen next and then the living room and then the, the, the rec room. Right. I'm like, okay, cool. Done. Now my, my photos are in order here on my ad. Right. I've got my copy built in here to the, the, to the top. Always use good white space. Make sure you don't have just a massive wall of words in here, right? You want to get good white space in here. It's just another kind of ad suggestion. So a little bit of white space, a couple emojis, you know, all my kind of highlighted information bulleted at the top here. And I would have taken more time to make this really look awesome, Shannon, and use some better emojis, the house emojis or something like that. Um, but from this point, I literally just come down here and hit save. And then I've got to pick my, how long I want my ad to run in my budget. I'll, Shannon, I'll give you some advice on this because you're going to go run an open house ad. And my guess is your open house is on Saturday. But let's just say that's the case. You're obviously not going to run this thing Sunday. Okay, cool. Um, so we've got like Wednesday, we got till Thursday, till Friday, till Saturday, till Sunday. It's like four days is essentially what you have here, right? The, your total budget needs to be $100 at a minimum. You can do it lower than that. But the ads just don't take off quite as well inside of Facebook. So what we kind of guide people to do is depending on how long you want to run your ad for. So in your case, we're like, we just want to run this ad for four, four days. What I would do is I would put a $25 a day budget on it. If I was going to rent, if I, you know, I could spend hundred dollars. If I was going to run it for 10 days, I could do a $10 budget for 10 days. But that that's, we've just seen a lot of ads being run through here. And when they get to that hundred dollar minimum budget, Facebook just treats them a little bit different. They get into the kind of into, into the play faster. Um, and they just, they have more consistent kind of results. So um, that, that's what I would tell you there. You could do it lower Shannon. If you want, you want to spend 10 bucks a day for four days, you could do that. I just, it's not going to get as much lift as if you give it kind of that hundred dollar minimum. If you have a chance to run an ad for longer, right? Then you could do a smaller daily budget, but so just a little bit of advice, uh, you, again, choose to do what you want, but that's just something that we've seen in here. And you literally just say, boom, and purchase ad. Now, when this ad gets out there and starts running, uh, Shannon, what'll happen is when they click this learn more button, we're gonna use the Facebook form, which means this, their information is already gonna be populated. And it's be like, yep, that's me. And then they'll drop over on your website just like this. And let me get off of this open house form here, but they drop right on this property right here like this and they would be logged in already, right? And so if they went off and started looking at other properties or they requested a showing or any of that other stuff they would do, we're tracking all that on the back end and they don't have to log in again. So that's even Shannon, like when you were running those ads over on command, it's, it's wherever you were sending them, right? So you were sending them to your website or to Keller Williams. Or when they landed on that website, they were not logged in, right? They just kind of did whatever they were doing. And you didn't really know. You just know you got this lead from Facebook, which is good. We want to get you the lead from Facebook. And we then want to show you on the back end, like what property they look at. Did they look at more properties, Shannon? Did they set up a, a listing alert? Like what did what'd they do, right? So yeah, this is a, a really easy, powerful um, tool for you to get in here and, and kind of make these ads. I'll run you through uh, a couple of the different types of uh, ads that that we have for um, Facebook, okay? And, and just at a high level, kind of explain what these are. So we've got just listed, we've got just sold, and there's actually a kind of a formula here, a way here, forward slash share, 
if I come pull a list and this listing's not sold, it's active and it just, it just listed today, but let's say it was sold. I'd go find a sold listing on my website. We've actually got this sold registration um, form here that will basically like be this kind of landing page where you can show, Hey, we sold this house, right. For 1.2 million, like see what your house is worth. And so these sold ads will kind of drive back to a page like this um, where we are basically saying, Hey, we, we sold this property. Look and see what your house is worth. So these are kind of seller side ads where we're, we're you know, promoting something we've sold and asking people to, to see if they're curious what their house is worth. You know, the open house ads run very similar to the just listed ads in that we're just kind of displaying that property out to them on Facebook. Home value ads, these are seller side ads where as I come in here, I can say, look, I want to do a seller ads for Kenmore, Washington. Right. So I come in here and I'm like, yeah. And it's the same kind of process where I'd edit the ad. I can, we're, we're by default sending them to your home value page where they can get a value for what their home is worth. But you can come in and edit these ads as well and, and get some, you know, some of your own seller leads potentially um, going out there. Back this way. These last two, okay, so like a just listed, a just sold ad could run for a while, right? That could run for a couple of weeks. A just listed ad, you're probably just going to run that for like as long as it's listed. And in a lot of our markets, like our homes are selling in two, three, four, five days. And so that just listed ad, you're probably just going to leave it out there for as long as the property is, is active, right? Once it goes pending, I know I'd continue to leave a just listed ad running. Same with open house ad, like, like Shannon, that ad is going to run from today until the day your open house is, then you need to pull that ad down. But these ads, a home value ad, it could just run forever, essentially, right? It could run for weeks and weeks at a time. The longer an ad runs in Facebook, the better the ad gets. Facebook just, they learn about the ad. They learn who's clicking on it. They learn who we want our target audience to be. Like over time, the ads get better. So my suggestion would be like, start with your budget. But if you can, if you have an ad set that sets up for this, make your, make your campaigns longer with maybe potentially lower like per day budgets. This buyer search ad, what this one does is it basically allows you to run an ad about particular types of properties. So we might say, look, I want to run an ad for Bellingham, Washington. Um, homes under $500,000 that have at least four bedrooms. Like there are only four listings in all of Bellingham right now that have under $500,000 with four, with, you know, at least four. But so I'm going to go, you know what? Let's, let's do Ferndale as well. Cause that's a neighboring city that people might end up, you know, wanting to, to live in. Right. And then let's do, um, let's do Sumas and let's do Blaine. Now, if we come in here, I might have to make a little adjustment here to get it to recalculate that. Yeah. Three. Oh, there's still only, all right, even in all those towns, there's still only four. That's okay. I, I, I go create this ad, right? Say, so, all right, let's do it. I want to create this ad. Here's those four properties, right? So I come in here and be like, all right, let me edit this. Um, I'm going to say this is, you know, all the, let me edit this. This is all the four bedroom homes in Whatcom County, you know, under, under 500,000. You know, looking for a, a big house for your family under 500,000 in Bellingham or Whatcom County? Um, we got them all and there's not very many of them. So jump on them today, right? Like, so we do these styles of ads trying to target types of like, like basically price points in our market that are desirable, right? So we might run an ad for Seattle, um, homes under you know, a million dollars with, with four bedrooms. Like there's probably 15 of those on the market, maybe, right? So we're trying to run these ads where we, we just find like desirable types of properties right at those price points that we know are kind of the break points in our market, right? Really, really powerful ads. And because what will happen is like, let's say tomorrow there's five of these um, homes that meet the criteria we set up. Great. The ads that are out there tomorrow, then we'll have those five homes in it. And when these ones sell and new ones come on the market, the ads will con constantly be swapped out with the new homes that meet that criteria that we set the ad up for. So this is a type of ad that we will run these ads for like a month, right? We'll spend, you know, 
10 bucks a day on an ad on this ad set. We'll run it for a month and we'll say, look, we want to target homes for sale in Bellingham with three plus bedrooms under 400,000 homes for sale in Bellingham with four plus bedrooms under 500,000. I think we would probably do a little bit higher here. Right? There's not very many really powerful um, ad set that you can run. Now, this last one um, is another, I, again, I, just, I think great option. It's this multi-listing ad. So let's say that you were like, you know what? I want to run an ad uh, and I want to, I want to target investors. So I want to go find in my, in my MLS right now, like the 10 best flip opportunities, right? So I'm going to come in here and like, you know, however I get these, these, this information doesn't matter. Right. I just need to come in here and find 10 properties that I think are like flip worthy. All right. So how would I do that? Well, you know, I'd probably go to some lower price points, right? I'd look for some real dogs and I'd be like, all right, here, I got five dogs, right? I've got their MLS numbers written down. Man, these things. Um, so I just, I just populate the, the addresses here, right? The MLS numbers. So I'm like one, you know, I, I grab this one and one, two, three, and I grab this one and one, two, three. You know, I, I put them in here, right? All the properties that I wanted to run in this ad set, right? Best flip opportunities in Bellingham. Thinking about becoming a flipper? Here's the 10 houses you should buy today, right? I say continue so I can do up to 10. I, and the same thing, I just edit the ad. I select my deal. I make a headline for it, right? The best flip property opportunities in Bellingham. Um, and off I go, right? I set a budget for it. I get in here and purchase my ad and, and off I go. Um, so we got nine more minutes left here. Guys, this is the last ad set that I want to uh, show you. The, the other stuff that's kind of down here is, um, you know, again, that easy ability to get to the marketing materials inside of Facebook. Um, and then we've got these ready-made designs. We can just like easily grab these designs. They're great for like Instagram stories or, um, you know, posting on, on the socials for any of the different like, hey, congratulations, class of 2021 or happy summer. We just, we're constantly making these things for you guys to, um, to get out there and, and just kind of promote your business. So Shannon, you're welcome. Um, I, I'm going to, let's see, you've got another question. So she, Shannon says with Brivity Connect, they will be running these kinds of ads for us, question mark, or we do this separately on our own in addition to whatever Connect does for us. Obviously open house ads we do on our own, but these listing ads, just sold ads, et cetera, is that part of our plan with Connect? Um, they are going to run ads uh, all the time, constantly, Shannon, um, targeting a type of buyer that you're interested in. Okay. Here's what I would say. Most of our teams, like you should run probably your own, like just listed ads, right? Maybe your own open house ads. And maybe like, I would, I would encourage you to maybe run some like home value ads. These other things connect really does take care of these other things. And the reality is Shannon, I don't know how big your team is, but the volume of leads that you get with connect even on like some of Ben's like best and brightest teams, we, we, we have actually like buried them in leads. So I don't know that you're going to need more leads than what connect is going to, to get for you. But if you wanted some real specific types of leads, like I think about if I wanted investor leads, I would absolutely have an ad set out around this multi listings where I was targeting like flip type properties that's not something necessarily that connects going to target for you. Cause that's a really small segment. We connects trying to get you kind of a broader audience. Um, but so there are, there's some reasons, I guess, why you would run your own. Like I got a brand new listing. Like, yeah, I want to promote that thing and market, especially if it's in a price point that I know is like really desirable. So Tanya connect includes, it's like three kind of it's, it's three campaigns in one. The first campaign is we go out and we generate leads for you. We basically run these styles, these kind of two styles of ads, but you guys tell us what type of buyer you want to go after. And during that consultation process, they really flush that out. So it's, it's leads. We go get a bunch of leads for you. Okay. And a third of the budget gets dedicated to that. A third of the budget then gets dedicated to this retargeting concept, right? This idea that like all these people that we're generating leads for and anybody that we can get back to your website that uh, we'll, we'll start retargeting them with properties kind of around the internet. And then the third portion of it is, the, is the, the, the branding ads where we're taking a marketing message and we'll work with you guys to help you kind of formulate that. And we're, and we're running those 
those remarketing campaigns all over the, the websites and the apps that these people use every day. Yeah, Shannon, um, you're welcome. L listen, here's, here's, our, um, here's why we come to work each day here at Brevity, okay? We have a, a mission. Our mission is delivering the dream of home ownership. And it means a lot. Like everybody on our team has some kind of a personal story around home ownership. Um, but here's how we do that. Here's how like me, a guy, I don't sell real estate anymore. It's been a number of years since the last time I sold a house, right? Uh, my role in helping deliver the dream of home ownership everywhere is helping you guys, Shannon, helping you do it more times this year, right? So that's why we're, we're bringing the heat here. Like we want you guys to get out there and deliver that dream of home ownership more times this year, because we know the impact it has on the families and the communities that we do it for. So we're really passionate about it. We want you guys to be just as passionate and I'm sure you are. Now you've got tools to help you market your business so you can get in front of more people so you guys can deliver that dream more times the rest of this year and definitely next year. So that's a little bit about Brivity Connect, Brivity Marketer, and some of the different power that's back there. Again, I will share with you guys, um, and I think I might have not shared this to the right. I'll share with you. Here's the link where you guys can go. Oh, that's not the right link. Hold on. Uh, I'll give you the link of where you can go and, and register for our Brivity Marketer class if you wanted to really just deep dive into it. I, I kind of showed you guys what it does. If you want to deep dive into how to do it, the, how does the editor work? you have any questions? I, there's probably a lot of questions I didn't answer about Marketer, although we do have a couple of minutes here if you wanted to, to ask any of those. Um, and I'll try to go back right now and see if I missed any commentary here that had questions in it. Yeah, Tanya, so uh, related to Connect, our people, they work with you. You do a consultation, you'll either meet with Grant or Allie, and they'll talk with you like, you know, what's your business? Where do you sell homes? What's that type of buyer that you're looking to get? Um, you know, are there any special attributes about your market? Like I'll give you an example here in Bellingham. One of the ad sets that we run here in Bellingham for Ben's local, Ben Kinney's local business here is we do ads for Bayview properties in Bellingham. So there's this idea here in Bellingham that like a lot of the homes are built on the side of this hill and it looks out at Bellingham Bay. Those houses are all like minimum 800,000. And most of those houses are like 1.2, 1.5 million, right? So if you wanted to live in a Bay Area home, so we're running all these ads out there, you know, see all the Bay Area homes in Bellingham, um, right? And they're all 800,000 and plus homes. So that ad set, Facebook starts to put it in front of who? They don't put it in front of the kids that go to school at Western, right? All these 18 to 22 year old kids going to school at Western that are on Facebook all the time. They're not putting our $800,000 house in front of those people. They might on the first couple of days, but over time, they're like, these kids don't even pause on these $800,000 houses. They're like, but hey, we got a guy over here. He pauses all the time. And in fact, he's a doctor, right? And we got another lady over here. She's an attorney. She pauses on these ads too. She never clicks on them, but we see her pause. Let's just serve her that ad more, right? So, so we'll work with you guys to figure that targeting out, Tanya, and, and, and update those ads and, and, and keep them fresh with, with new properties. And um, now, nah, Eric, yeah, the 12% is added. So like if you spend a, a hundred dollars, like you want to do a hundred dollar ad, the 12% comes out of that. It's not on top of that. So it'd be like we 88 of the dollars would get spent on the ad and, and Brivity would, would keep 12 of the dollars. And we show you that, right? You guys, you saw that. I think that's why you're asking that question. But we show it to you right there on the ad as you go to purchase it. Like what portion is going to the, the service fee? All right. Um, you guys have an awesome rest of your week. Get in there and use Brevity Marketer. Uh, reach out to our support team if you have any challenges or problems. Get signed up for that class on, on Thursdays if you want to really kind of deep dive into, into marketing and how it works and, and the editor and all that fun stuff. Shannon, I'm so glad that we got you here and we talked about that ad that you want to run for your open house on Sunday. High five. That's super awesome. Uh, get out there and go run that ad. Let me know how it goes. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.